Hello everyone again, this is Antonio with Team Tigio, and I'm coming at you with another exciting video. In this video, we want to talk about, is it never too late to stop dreaming? Entrepreneurs who started their businesses after age 35. What inspired me to do this video is the fact that my mom is over 60, and she recently, um, I helped set up her LLC and um, I'm proud of her. So I just wanted to, so I start looking at other entrepreneurs who started the path of entrepreneurship at 35 or beyond. So let's dive into this list of entrepreneurs who have, you know, have gained a, a great bit of wealth after the age of 35. So let's, without further ado, let's, let's dive into the slide. First, we want to talk about William Proctor, founded Proctor & Gamble at age 35. Proctor & Gamble was founded in 1837 by two men who met by chance. William Proctor, immigrating from England, established himself as a candle maker in Cincinnati, which was a busy, a busy center of commerce and industry in the early 19th century. And James Gamble, arriving from Ireland, apprenticed himself to a soap maker. The two might have never met had they not married sisters, Olivia and Elizabeth Norris, whose father convinced his new son-in-laws to become business partners. As a result, in 1837, a bold new entre uh, enterprise was born, Proctor and Gamble. William Proctor was born in 1801 in England. As a boy, he worked as general store apprentice learning to dip candles, a skill would later lead to both fame and fortune. His first entrepreneurial venture, however, met with disaster. The day after opening, his dry goods shop in London was robbed, leaving Proctor 8,000 in debt, a huge sum in 1832. Well, 8,000 in debt is a huge sum in 2020. Determined to rebuild, he and his wife decided to immigrate to the United States. While traveling down the Ohio River, Miss Proctor became ill and died a few months after uh, their arrival in Cincinnati. If you want to read more about William Proctor, uh, you can go to the reference pg.com where you can read more about, you know, the aspects of his entrepreneurial journey. Let's talk. Let's next. Let's talk about William Bowen, founded Bowen at age 35 on July 15th, 1916. A month after the BMW's first flight, William Boyne incorporated his aeroplane building business as Pacific Aero Products Company. Already a shrewd businessman, Boyne outlined his ambitions in the auto articles of incorporation. One of the articles allowed the firm to engage in the general manufacturing business and to manufacture goods, wares, and merchandise of every kind, especially to manufacture aeroplanes and all patterns thereof. William Boyne transferred ownership of four of his aircraft, two BMWs, a C4, and the Martin TA, as well as associated property to his company. On April 18, 1917, he changed the name to the to Boeing Aeroplane Company. Uh, if you want to read more about Mr. William Boyne, go to referencehistorylink.org. And now let's talk about Mark Benoff, founded Salesforce at age 35. Salesforce CEO Mark Benoff owns about 4% of the cloud computer software firm he co-founded in 1999. Before Salesforce, he spent 13 years at database software giant Oracle as a protege of Larry Ellison. Salesforce was a pioneer in hosting its software online rather than installing it in a client's computer systems. He's an angel investor in dozens of tech startups and a prolific philanthropist. Benoff and his wife Lynn have paid, pledged $350 million to, Uni to University of California, San Francisco for its Children's Hospital and Research. Mark Benoff has a net worth over $10 billion. Forrest.com is the reference. If you're a fan of home breweries, then you may be a fan of Mr. J.C. Jacobson, founded uh, Carlsberg at age 35. J.C. Jacobson was born in 1811 
and started brewing its first lager in the cellar, like many home brewers today. In 1847, at age 36, he founded his first commercial brewery in Copenhagen. A believer in science, he shared his knowledge with fellow brewers. Reference Cosberg.com. So, if you are home, if you thinking about doing a home brewery, uh, you might want to read more about Cosberg, and you can, like I said, the references Cosberg.com. Next, we want to talk about Namiha or Daria, founded at Hachi Tachi at age 36. One of the foremost pioneer industrialists in the electrical industry was born in Tichigi Prefecture, Japan on January 15, 1874. His name was Nihima or Daria, the founder of Hachi Tachi, Japan's largest manufacturer of electrical machineries and a leading producer of semiconductors. In 1920, Hachitachi, Hachitachi was incorporated as a separate company and Nehima Namiha was installed as managing director. He was promoted to president in 1929, a position he held until 1947, when he was removed by the American Occupation Authorities. In 1924, Hachitachi produced a large-scale DC electric locomotive the first to be uh, manufactured in Japan. This was followed by elevators and a refrigerators in 1932. More electrical gadgets and equipment were added later. Namiha died in 1951 at the age of 77. In 2019, Hachitachi had revenues of 85.5 billion, ranked, ranked number 102 in Forbes Global 500 list. Uh, reference uh, P E O P L A I D uh, dot com. Next, let's talk about Mr. Reed Hoffman, founded LinkedIn at age 36. Reed Hoffman co founded professional, professional networking, um, yeah, networking site LinkedIn in 2013 and is a partner at venture capital firm Gridlock Partners. In 2016, Hoffman said LinkedIn sold LinkedIn to man, uh, Microsoft for $26.2 billion in cash and joined Microsoft's board. Hoffman is part of the so-called PayPal Mafia and was one of the first employees at the payment company that was later sold to eBay. Before PayPal, Hoffman created the failed dating site SocialNet which say uh, with some regard as the first online social network. He was he has put 1.5 billion into impact investments through charitable entities like donor advised funds. Forbes excludes this sum from his fortune. In October 2018, Hoffman co-opted his third book titled Blitzscaling: The Lightning Fast Path to Build a Massively Valuable companies. Uh, Forbes.com is the is the uh, reference in this. If you want to read more about Mr. Reed Hoffman. Next, let's talk about Roland Macy, founded Macy's at age 36. Roland Hussey Macy Sr., August 30th, 1822 through March 29th, 1877, was an American businessman who founded the department store chain R.H. Macy & Company. He and his brother Charles opened a dry goods store in Marysville, California. Shortly after the city was founded at the height of the gold rush in 1850, Charles stayed in Marysville after the store fell, but Roland headed east. Between 1843 and 1855, Macy owned four retail dry goods stores including the original Macy's store in downtown uh, Haver Haverhill, Massachusetts, established in 1851 to serve the mill industry employees of the area. They all failed, but he learned from his mistakes. Macy moved to New York City in 1858 and established a new store named R.H. Macy Dry Goods at 6th Avenue on the corner of 14th Street significantly north of dry, uh, other dry goods stores uh, uh, of the time. On the company's first day of business on October 28, 
1858 sales total $11.08 which equals to $320.27 today uh, if you want to read more about Mr. Uh, Roland Macy you go to the reference peoplepeel.com let's talk about Miss Doris Fisher uh, founded Gap at age 36 Doris Fisher co-founded clothing retailer Gap in 1969 with their husband Don who died in 2009 after the couple, uh, couple struggled to find jeans that fit him. The couple raised 63000 to open their first store which sold jeans and music in San Francisco. Doris Fisher served as the company's manufacturer uh, merchandiser from the day it opened until 2003 and sat on Gap's board until 2009. In early 2020, Gap canceled its plan to spin off Old Navy as a separate public company. The 1953 Stanford economics graduate, graduate co-founded the Kemp Foundation, which supports public charter schools donating $15 million. Doris Fisher has a net worth of $2.4 billion. Reference Forbes.com. Next, let's talk about Hugo's boss. Founded Hugo Boss at age 37. Hugo Ferdinand Boss was a German fashion designer and businessman. He was the founder of the clothing company Hugo Boss AG. He was an active member of the Nazi Party as early as 1931 and remained loyal to the Nazi Germany ideology throughout the duration the duration of the party's existence he founded his own clothing company in Meitzingen in 1923 and then a factory in 1924 initially with two partners the company founded shirts and jackets and then work uh, work clothing sportswear and raincoats in the 1930s it produced uniforms for the SA the SS, the Hitler Youth, and the Postal Service, Rail uh, Employees, and later uh, Wehrmacht. Reference PeoplePill.com if you want to read more about the foundation of Hugo Boss, that is the powerhouse of uh, fashion of today, but it, it served a different purpose uh, a little, you know, in, during its foundation years. Now, let's talk about our next slide. Mr. Main Kale found a garment at age 38. Main Kale uh, co founded GPS Maker Garment with the late Gary Burrell in 1989 after the duo led development of the first GPS navigator at Allied Signal. Main Kale is executive chairman of 3.3 billion sales navigation firm Garmin which makes everything for GPS for cars to weather radar for airplanes. Garmin has brought GPS navigation and wearable technology to the automotive, outdoor, fitness, aviation, and marine markets. Kale stepped down as CEO in 2012 but remains executive chairman and a member of the board. Kale came to the United States from Taiwan in, in the 1970s and got a master's and a PhD in engineering at the University of Tennessee. Ming has a net worth of 4.2 billion, reference Forbes.com. Next, let's talk about Cheryl Wayne, found at HTC at age 39. Synopsis. In the in the era of smartphones, it is hard to win over people's trust, competing with many top-line brands that already exist and have a niche market of their own. But for HTC, the smartphone series that claims rightly to be quite uh, quietly brilliant, this wasn't a difficult task, thanks to the equally quietly brilliant, brilliant co-founder of the company, Cheryl Wayne. Founded in 1997, HTC has today become one of six mobile phones that are sold in the United States and that's an incredible achievement. It is also credited for making the first Android phone, the first Microsoft powered smartphone, and the first Microsoft 3G phone. Early life. Sherwin Wayne was born to Wayne Young Ching, founder of the Formosa Plastics and Business Tycoon. 
had entrepreneurial skills in her genes. After graduating from the University of California, Wayne worked for First International Com uh, Computers, a company co-founded by her sister. Today, Shara has a net worth of $1.6 billion. Reference successstory.com if you want to read more about Ms. Shara Wayne. Uh, like I told you in the slide, some names will be butchered. So let's talk about Mr. Amasio Ortega, founded Zara at age 39. Ortega was born on March 28, 1936, in Bunch Dongo, Arbus, Leon. He was three, three, he has three older siblings. Ortega's childhood was spent in Leon, but when he was 14 years old, his family moved to uh, Corona, Corona. His father was a railway worker. Here, Ortega became working at for a shirt maker and learned the art of apparel making. He left high school at the age of 14. In 1975, Ortega opened his first apparel retail store along with his wife, Rosilia. He wanted to name the store Zarba, but the name was already taken. So he set up for Zara. The store was, was a success in the following decade. He, he opened uh, several Zara stores across Galicia, Spain. Today, Zara has 6,200 stores sp uh, spread in 70 different countries. Mr. Amasio may be unknown to most, but he has a net worth over $77 billion, and that puts him as one of the top or the top European uh, uh, fashion apparel industry financially. Reference successstory.com. All right, next, let's talk about Golden Moore, founded Intel at age 39. Golden Moore, the co founder of Intel. In 1968, Robert Knox and Golden Moore were two unhappy engineers working for the Fairchild Semiconductor Company who decided to quit and create their own company at the time when many Fairchild employees were leaving to create smart uh, startups. People like Knotts and Moore were nicknamed the Fairchildren. Robert Knotts typed himself a one-page idea of what he wanted to do with his new company, and that was enough to convince San Francisco venture capitalist Art Rock to back Knotts' and Moore's new venture. Rock raised $2.5 million in less than two days. And that money went on to help uh, build uh, what we know that today is Intel. And the reference is ThoughtCo.com if you want to read more about Golden Moore. Uh, this is another name that's going to be tough for me to pronounce, but I'm going to give it a go. And that's Mr. Lou Shenzi, founded Leno Lenovo at age 39. Lu Shenzi is the founder of Lenovo, the second largest computer manufacturer in the world, and remains the paramount leader of the firm. In the 1980s, with market reforms, the Chinese government commissioned Lu to distribute foreign-made computers. Lu founded Lenovo, whose English name was originally Legend, in 1984 with 200,000 yuan, which is equivalent to 31,462 USD and a group of 10 other engineers in Beijing. Their first significant transaction attempt to import televisions failed. The group rebuilt itself within a year of hard work conducting quality checks on computers for new buyers. The Novo soon invested money in developing a circuit board that would allow IBM PCs to process Chinese characters. This product was Lenovo's first major success. In 1990, Lenovo started to assemble the PCs under its original name, Legend. Reference ChinaDaily.com.cn All right, let's talk about Chip Wilson, founded Lululemon at age 42. Founded by Chip Wilson of Vancouver, Canada in 1998, Lululemon is a yoga-inspired technical athletic apparel company for women and men. What started as a design studio by day and a yoga studio by night soon became a standalone store in November of 2000 on West 40th, uh, 40th Avenue, I mean West 4th Avenue in Vancouver's Kit, uh, Kit Salino neighborhood. Probably another name I butchered. 
Our vision for our stores was to create more than a place where people could get gear to sweat in. We wanted to create a community hub where people could learn and discuss the physical aspects of healthy living, mindfulness, and a living a life of possibility. It was also important for us to create real relationships with our guests and understand what they were passionate about, how they like to sweat, and help them celebrate their goals. Today, we, we do all of this in our stores around the globe. Reference info.lululemon.com. Let's talk about Jerry Baldwin, founded Starbucks at age 42. Jerry, Gerald Jerry Baldwin is an American businessman who along with Gordon Boker and Ziv Siegel founded Starbucks in Seattle in 1971. He is, he is a Sonoma Valley Vintner, Vintner and co-founder of J. Baldwin Wines. Jerry Baldwin learned the coffee trade from Alfred Piot, who starred Piot in Coffee and Tea, was the inspiration for Starbucks. Starbucks purchased roasted coffee beans from Piot during its first year of operation. Baldwin has recalled, uh, has recalled Piot as a, being a very generous mentor. In 1984, when Piot was offered for sale, Baldwin led a group of investors, including Boker, to, pur to purchase the company. In 1987, he sold his interest in Starbucks. Baldwin was chairman of Piat until 2001, when Piat went public and he became a director of the company. Reference peoplepeel.com. Let's talk about Mr. Sam Walton, founded Walmart at age 44. Who was Sam Walton? Sam Walton opened his first Walmart in 1962 after years in the retail management business. The discount chain expanded internationally over the next 30 years, growing into the world's largest company by 2010. Walter stepped down as CEO in 1988 at the age of 70, but remained active in the company until his death in 1992. Early years. A, a pioneer businessman who broke convention and showed that large discount stores could thrive in small rural areas, Samuel Moore Walton was born in March 29, 1918 in Kane Fisher, Oklahoma. He was the first son of Thomas Walton, a banker, and his wife Nancy Lee, building an empire. In 1962, Walton opened his first Walmart store in Rogers, Arkansas. Success was swift. By 1976, Walmart was a publicly traded company with shares valued north of $176 million. By the early 1990s, Walmart stock worth had jumped to $45 billion. In 1991, Walmart surpassed Sears and Roebuck and Company to become the country's largest retailer. Reference Biography.com if you want to read a lot more about Mr. Sam Walton and the path that he took for success. A lot of y'all didn't know one of the retailers that he managed at was actually J.C. Penney's before he left that company and ventured off and actually formed his own company, which is today the powerhouse Walmart. All right, let's talk about Tony Ryan. Ryan uh, founded Ryan Air at age 49. Ryanair is one of Europe's most popular airlines, serving over 2,400 daily flights from its 83 bases. The, car the carrier has grown rapidly since operating its first flights in 1995. CAPA reports that Ryanair is Europe's biggest individual airline with 140 million passengers flown last year. This is a feat that co-founder Tony Ryan would be proud of since building the brand nearly 35 years ago. The Irishman was previously an Aer Lingus employee from 1995 before working with them to start Guinness Piat Aviation GPA. GPA specialized in aircraft leasing and would be and, and went on to be worth four billion dollars at its peak. The organization benefited from technical, financial, and legal support from the Air Lingus, allowing Ryan to broker and manage wet leases. 
These deals supported aircraft leases with the also maintenance, uh, maintenance staff and flight crew. Cross country challenge. Following this growth in confidence and the revenue through GPS operation, Ryan used uh, his experience to found Ryanair. The businessman wanted to challenge the dominance that the small number of airlines had over the Ireland Britain network. Uh, reference simple flying.com all right let's talk about possibly an unknown individual especially in the united states but uh he's a he found success at the age 50 and that's peter cullen found an aaron candy at 55 i mean at 50 i'm sorry i don't even know i saw 55 aaron candy was founded in 1998 by father and son peter and richard cullen after they identified an opportunity in europe confectionery market for an american style high quality jelly bean today it employs 70 people in blatchard's town the company has between 10 and 15 core uh, uh core customers in ireland including avoca avoca and, to, uh, and tesco and a further 120 clients outside the country reference independent.ie all right and let's talk about one of the outside of Sam Walton, one of the most familiar faces on this list, and that's Colonel, I mean, Colonel Harlan David Sanders, founded KFC, not at age 62, he started actually franchising his company at age 62, but who was Colonel Harlan Sanders? At the age of 40, Harlan Sanders was running a popular Kentucky service station that also served food so popular in fact that the governor of kentucky designated him a kentucky colonel eventually sanders found out for, i mean eventually sanders focused on franchising his fried chicken uh, business around the country collecting the payment for each chicken sold the company went on to become the world's largest fast food chicken chain kentucky fried chicken Sanders died in Louisville, Kentucky on December 16th, 1980. I believe he was 90 years old when he passed. Kentucky Fried Chicken went public in 1966 and was listed on the New York Stock Exchange in 1969. More than 3,500 franchise and company-owned restaurants were in worldwide operation when Hublin Inc. acquired KFC Corporation in 1974 for $285 million. KFC became a subsidiary of R.J. Reynolds Industries, Inc., now R.J.R. Nabisco, Inc. When Hoblin, Inc. was acquired by Reynolds in 1982, KFC was acquired in, in October 1986 from R.J.R. Nabisco, Inc., by, by Pepsi Inc. for approximately $840 million. So you know if that was 1986, to, uh, what is that, uh, 34 years ago, that the company is very, definitely valued in the billions today. That's not a small feat for a guy who used to sell his uh, chicken outside of his service station and then he took it on and became, uh, make it into a franchise. So the reason, like I said, I made this slide, I want to talk about a lot of the entrepreneurs who gain success after a certain age in life. And I created and compiled a, a, a list of very successful entrepreneurs. A lot of their companies are around today and their companies are still making and growing wealth off the original dream that these entrepreneurs put in place. So kudos to my mom and kudos to a lot of older uh, older entrepreneurs that might be in the business of starting their business now so they can leave a legacy for their children or grandchildren one day. So thank you again for watching my uh, video, watching this slide. I had a couple of technical video, uh, uh, technical issues. I'll see if I can edit those out. My computer start jumping on its own at one point. But anyways, this is Antonio with Team Tigio. And uh, thank you for watching the slide. Please list your, the type of business that you're starting. If you're 35 and older, or even if you're 30 and you're thinking about starting your business, list that information below so we can get a better insight of what type of business you started. So yeah, 
So, anyways, this is Antonio with Team Tiggio, and I will see you next time.